Come on, right where you are. Somebody just lift up a worship. Just worship him. Come on, worship him. Let him hear your voice. Let him hear your voice. Come on. Worship him. Don't ask him for anything. Just open your mouth and worship him. Come on. You alone are worthy, Jesus. Glory to your name. You alone are worthy, Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Worship him, worship him. For they that worship, come on, must worship in spirit and in truth. Come on. Come on, worship him. Let him hear your voice. Let him hear your voice. We worship your name, oh God. You're an amazing God. You're an awesome God. Come on. Nobody like you, our God. Oh, sweet wonder. <laughs> yeah, sweet wonder. Come on. Jesus, the son of God, you are, you are. Come on, that's why we bless you, God. Come on, that's why we worship you, God. Come on, because of who you are. Come on, and we shout glory. Come on to the left. To the left. Glory. Glory. To the left. Glory. Glory. To the left. To the left. Glory. Glory. To the left. Let's do it again. Glory.
Just lift your hands where you are And somebody cry out glory Come on the angels cry out glory Come on and cry out
right now and you're trying to figure out God where are you right now I know I know on Thursday it's about to be Thanksgiving but where are you right now because I don't feel that Thanksgiving-ish I don't feel like in the Thanksgiving mood and right now I just want you to drop in the chat just one thing that you're grateful for God to do that he's been doing in your life for me it's just breathing I'm so glad that God has woke me up this morning and he's clothed me in my right mind and I don't know about you, if I don't have anything else to praise God for, if it's not a new outfit, if it's not a new pair of shoes, I can thank God for waking me up this morning. Even if I don't have my job, I thank God for waking me up this morning. Even if I have to go without, I thank God for waking me up this morning. And I just love what our praise and worship team said today. They said, every day is a day of thanksgiving. And no, re no regard of where you are or what you, what you got going on every day. God demands, he commands that we open ourselves, open our hearts in a spirit of thanksgiving. So before we go into this word, because God has a word for us today, I just want us to prepare our mind for what he's about to do. I want him to prepare my mind and spirit what he's about to do through me. So let us bow our heads just for a word of prayer. Oh, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for being the Alpha Omega in the beginning and end, dear Lord God. I'm asking you, God, the same God who separated the Red Sea, the same God who multiplied fish and bread, right now in the name of Jesus, dear Lord God, I need you to transform living rooms into cathedrals. I need you to transform living rooms into sanctuaries. I need you to transform living rooms into contemplation areas, into altars right now, dear Lord God. I need you right now to turn living rooms, dear Lord God, into surgery rooms. We need open heart surgery, dear Lord God. We need open heart surgery as a nation, as a country, as a family, dear Lord God. So we pray right now in this moment, dear Lord God, that you will reduce me, dear Lord God, and increase you, dear Lord God. That you, dear Lord God, will speak through this word. We thank you, dear Lord God, for St. John. We thank you for Pastor CJ. We thank you, dear Lord God, for everyone that's tuned in. But in this moment, do your thing. Nothing more and nothing less. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. For the time I have with you, we're going to hang out in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 15 to 19. We're going to be hanging out in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 15 to 19. And um, as we're hanging out there, I'm going to give you some time to get there. And whether you're doing it on your cell phone or you're pulling up an extra tab on your computer screen, I'm rock, rocking my throwback, the old school Bible, you know what I'm saying? But however you are joining us today, however you're hanging out with us today, I'm going to give you a minute to get there. And hopefully you are there. So let us read. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I 
will. There's some things God is going to do in your life very, very absolutely. He said, I will send to Babylon and break down all the bars. You see, he didn't say some of the bars. He said all the bars. Tell your neighbor if you got one in your living room saying God is about to break down all the bars. Then let's go to verse 18. He said, do not, do not remember former things or consider the things of the old. Now let's skip to 19. This is my favorite part. The Pentecostal in me wants to just shout when I read this right here. He says, I'm about to do. That means it ain't already happened, but he's about to do that thing. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. All right, for the time I have with you today, I just want to speak from the idea. Um, I want to talk from this concept, living in transition while walking in faith living in transition while walking in faith. You must understand when you're living in transition while walking in faith, there are going to be some times when you are a little uncertain. Um, you must understand when you're living in transition while walking in, walking in faith, there are going to be times when you clearly don't understand what God is doing in your life. Um, you know, anybody that is sure of themselves, that calls themselves a Christian and says they got it going on and they're checking all the check box, I got to give them a side eye in this season. Because if you say you're walking by faith and not by sight, something comes along with that. Um, I, I got to give people, I got to give people a major side eye when they know too much and they are know-it-all and they got the S on their chest because there's got to be a certain amount of a pause, a certain amount of a apprehension, uh, a, a certain amount of respect, a, a certain reverence, if you will. Um, you got to understand one thing I've learned. I've learned in walking and walking with God and walking with God through transitions is that he progressively reveals himself. Uh, if I could put it in um, a, a better way, he don't give it all away at once. He gives you a little bit at a time. Um, we see glimpses of his glory, little excerpts of the story, like a jigsaw puzzle. He forces us to the table, and when we're walking in transition, he makes us deal with each broken piece as they come together to see the full picture. I know it don't sound sexy, but it's accurate. Oh, as he begins to unfold himself to you and he becomes more clear to you through the word, we go from glory to glory, faith to faith, and yes, transition to transition. Oh, oh, so if you're going through something right now and if you're feeling some type of way about all the things that are going on, don't get mad because God does not always give us the details. Um, you must understand as we transition into this very uncertain holiday season, lot, laced with caution, as we transition from long embraces last year to quick daps and fist bumps and What's up? One thing we cannot adjust, one thing we can't distance from is our nearness, our awareness, our knowing right now that God is not a static God. Um, he might tell us to be still. Oh, but he is forever moving. Uh, he's forever rotating. And yes, he is forever the God of the transition. Oh, you're going to hear that a couple times because I want you to know that God is the God of transition. That doesn't mean that he's a God that makes transition. Yes, that's true. But he reigns over transition. He tells transition what to do. Oh, we serve a God that develops us. He cultivates us. He morphs us into instruments instruments for his divine purpose. And the primary way, one of the primary ways that God redeems us is that he takes us through transition. Oh, in the text he says, do not remember former things or consider the things of the old. I'm about to do. I don't know about you, but the country in me want to say I'm finna do. <laughs> 
God's about to finna do some stuff in your life that don't even make grammatical sense to people. Oh, I'm about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Uh, uh, I chose this text in part because I wanted to convey that even in the Bible days, changes, transitions brought about anxiety. You must understand if we can just hang out in the text for a minute, Isaiah is ministering to a nation of Israel in the depths of transition. The life in captivity is coming to an end. You might say, preacher, oh, this should be a happy time. Oh, preacher, this should be a time of celebration. Oh, but I would suggest to you that some of the most terrifying moves, some of the most frightening moves are the new moves, <laughs> the new pivots, the new opportunities, the new folks, that new thing. As a father of a one-year-old, I know what it's like to have the new thing that you prayed for, the new thing you cry for, the new thing you fasted for, the new thing that you rubbed the belly and said, oh, I think I know what it's going to be for it to keep you up all night long. Have you ever had a new thing keep you up all night long? You see, often when we get these prophetic words of a new thing, we're quick to shout. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So many times when we hear a new thing coming, we're quick to dance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So often when we hear a new thing, if you're Pentecostal like me, you want to speak in tongues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, but after you get done shouting over the new, at the same time, some of us are trying to avoid. We're trying to run. We're trying to dip from the process or the transition behind the new. Oh, you can't have your cake and eat it too. If you're going to get the new thing that God has promised you, baby, you're going to have to go through some transitions. I know this ain't a sexy Thanksgiving message. I know this ain't an apple pie, but I just got to kick it real with you. Mm, I would suggest to you the new thing will not just make you praise. You, you, you know, the new thing won't just make you shout. Oh, but if it's truly, truly, truly coming from the desk of our creator, it's going to ignite transition in your life like never before. Tell your neighbor the new thing needs to cause some transitions. It ain't new if it ain't shifting nothing. It ain't new if it ain't getting on nobody's nerves. It ain't new if it ain't making you think about things differently in your life. Oh, 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 a new thing, a new thing. It'll force you into a posture of humility. It'll make you apologize to people you cussed out last year. Just look at me, just look at me. A new thing, a new thing. It will force you into a space of introspection and make you take inventory of yourself and it'll make you stretch yourself to God and say God created me a new heart oh, oh it will say God mind the words of my mouth and let them be aligned to the meditation of your spirit in your heart a new thing a new thing because living in transition is not full of certainty it's not full of clarity but it's the willingness to follow God while seeing nothing at all. Uh, last time we hung out together on my proverbial couch with one another, we talked about this tension. Y'all remember this a couple weeks ago? We talked about this conflict, if you will. Uh, this is part two to a part one series I talked about a couple weeks ago. I talked about living in fear while walking in faith. However, however, that's a transition right there. However, I would like to build upon the thought on this Sunday morning to suggest that though God can keep me while I navigate fear, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and though God can keep me and he's a sustaining God with me through the difficult, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and even though God can keep me through the hard, and even though God can keep me through the season of the overwhelming, I got the t-shirt, been there, done that ride, that ride, and I survived. Oh, and I serve a God can keep you in the downright unimaginable. Oh, 
know. But I got to tell you on this Sunday morning, we also serve a God of the transitions. What does that mean? What that means is just because I started in fear don't mean I got to stay in fear. Oh, my God. That means just because God will sustain me in a season of fear, that doesn't mean he won't transition me. God is transitioning me from some stuff that I was dealing with last week, and he's giving me full clarity and peace like never before. You got to understand, he specializes in bringing people from point A to point B. Like a spiritual triple A, he meets you right where you are with your flat tire. He'll take that bad boy off and put the wheel of your sanity back. He'll give you your dignity back. He'll give you your grace back. He'll give you your finances back. And he'll carry you on your way. I know they told you on the news, no holiday traveling. But have you ever traveled with Jesus? Hmm. You must understand God being the God of transitions is an essential part of his character. What do you mean, preacher? This characteristic, this fundamental truth about God being a God of transition. Uh, 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 when I was thinking about this, I was trying to come up with the perfect metaphor. But I would say it like this. It's like a beauty mark on a supermodel. God's ability to transition us, God's ability to sustain us is his invisible beauty mark of glory. It's the thing that makes him captured. Boy. It's the thing that makes us want to model after him. Uh, to put this in context, you must understand that when Isaiah says, do not remember former things or consider the things of the old, he's not talking to a group of people who have overcome. Oh, nor is he communicating to a group of people that have arrived. He, uh, 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 he's not talking to a group of people who have it all together. He's talking to a group of people who are in process. Am I talking to you right now? Are you in process? You say, preacher, I don't have it all going on. I haven't arrived, but I'm in process. This message is for you. The fact that he has to tell them, do not remember the former things, lets me know he was talking to a group of people who were stuck in old mindsets, old habits, old systems, old traditions, old antiquated models of thinking. Brother Isaiah, he hits it off like this. He says, thus says the Lord. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I will send to Babylon and break down all the bars. He didn't say some of the bars because he could have broke down some of the bars and you still would have been able to walk through that thing. But God said, I'm about to break down all the bars so you know that there's no more coming back from this. We must understand that a key part of Isaiah's theology hangs on the fact that God is a God of transitions, which means that he is a bar breaking God, that he overcomes limits. Mm -hmm. He overcomes unforeseeable circumstances. Oh, but Isaiah is so bad. He's so clever. Isaiah coins his own brand of transition and he calls it redemption. You must understand this ability to transition something from being in bondage to being free is called redemption. This idea of being able to transition debt to being liberated is called redemption. You must understand when we enter this text, we are not just sitting with a group of people who are in the mid, who are just lollygagging and saying hallelujah or I'm just glad I made it. Uh, 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 if you do that, you're misreading the text. Uh, you must understand when we're rocking with these group of people, there's not a group of people who say, thank God the turkey didn't burn. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You must understand when we're dealing with these group of people, we're, 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 we're not talking to a group of people who say, mm, I'm glad I, I made that bill. No, 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 no. And, and those, those, those blessings are great, right? And they're things are thankful for and those things that we should give honor to God but these people these particular people are people who are in the midst of a political revolution after years of living under a rule of an intense dictator Mm -hmm. You must understand if we're going to truly capture the essence of this text, you must understand what we're seeing right now in this prophetic projection is political authority being transferred. We're witnessing a transition of power.
Um, in the news today, it seems like what's trending, uh, what's in conversation, what's in headlines is this concept of transition, this idea of powerful or peaceful transition as the president-elect Joe Biden awaits to take office. Um, if you've been keeping up with the headlines, you know at this point that president-elect Joe Biden is facing obstruction of all sorts. Um, he's dealing with a president that won't concede. He's dealing with an environment where there's no security updates, where reasonably, if this is a different time, he would have been getting security updates or communication briefings. None of that's happening. It's even so dire that he doesn't even have access to fund his very own transition. But not only that, he finds himself being questioned of his validity of even being the winner of the race. Uh, however, in spite of these challenges, the Biden and Harris ticket has been determined to see it through. Embracing an optimistic outlook, refusing to give energy to what they do not have, but shifting and taking on this absolute posture into pouring their energy into solution-based progressive steps to healing our nation. Oh, I'm not trying to be political here, but I will tell you that the Biden and Harris gives us a page of leadership for us. Uh, for me, for me, the Biden transition team, um, as they position themselves to keep a calm head in the face of obstruction and observation, an opposition serves as a lesson for me as I seek to be a better leader in my personal life. As I seek to be a better leader in my professional life, it's a lesson of fortitude. It's a lesson of perseverance. It's a lesson on how to live in transition while walking in faith. What do you mean, preacher? What I mean is that there are some times in your life when you are right. You are so right that you're downright right. You are the winner straight up and straight down. But Negroes, black Negroes, white Negroes, Hispanic Negroes, being Negroes who are out of touch with reality and out of their mind will make it their business to deny your accomplishments, to assault you, to attack you, to throw shade at you, all for the sole purpose to try to invalidate you. Oh, just type in the chat box. You ain't invalidating me today. Oh, you're not stripping my joy away today. You're not taking away my dignity. I'm here. I'm here on a special assignment to declare to you in no uncertain terms that this is a strategy of distraction. And it will derail you from your purpose. It will derail you from your goals. And yes, it will take your dreams if you like it, if you let it. Oh, but in 2020, I'm about to go Biden, in, Biden on them. I'm moving anyway. I'm moving anyway. What does that mean, preacher? What that means is that in 2020, you have spent too much time, too much time looking and waiting for people who don't matter to concede. Uh, I'm about to tell you this again. In 2020, in 2020, you've been waiting too long for people who don't care about you, people who haven't decided to vote, to, to waiting for them to concede. In this season, I'm not waiting for you to validate me. I'm here to tell you mama might never come back. Grandmama might never answer the phone call, but baby, I got to keep it moving. I got to keep it moving. You might have quit me. You might not even return my phone call, but I got to keep it moving. I might have to move out. I might have to do something different. Whatever it is, I got to keep on moving. Can I push it deeper? In this season, I know it's tempting, but don't fall for the bait. This is not the season to answer your opponent in words. This is what my kids say my the students I teach they say sometimes you got to make moves in silence uh, sometimes in this season I'm about to start making moves in silence the reason why the enemy is whooping your butt in this season is because you're talking too much you're telegraphing your moves you're telling everybody your business sometimes you just need to shut up and pray to God that needs to be your confidant partner can I keep it between you and me no just keep it between you and G-O-D oh, that's sometimes how you gotta roll sometimes you gotta roll like that in this season you don't have the time you don't have the energy to respond to every Facebook battle every status every Twitter feed in this season you don't have the energy to put in check to clap 
back to every naysayer, to every hater. This is the season of more showing and less telling. I'm about to show you some in this season. How many people know that God is tired of telling you? He's about to show you something in this season. Come on, Isaiah. Help me preach this sermon. He says, now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? Now, 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 it's easy to miss when you when you are stuck in a conversation with your past. You got to understand the now, the now, the present moment. It's easy. It's easy to just glance over when you're with when you're paralyzed by the ifs and the could be's of your future. Do you not perceive it? You got to understand what perceive means. It means to know. It means to find out. It means to discern. It's the ability to distinguish based on experience. It means to acknowledge. It's the thing that made Isaiah's message so potent even to this contemporary day. And that is that he had the ability to identify, to capture, to label, to see the the manifestation of Christ before he was embodied in flesh. I don't know about you, but in this Thanksgiving season, as we enter this holiday season, I'm not asking for a new car. I'm not asking for new gym shoes. I'm not asking for a new iPod or a new iPhone. What I'm asking God for is perception. God, let me perceive you better. I don't know about you, but that's more valuable than a million dollars. God, can I hear you better? God, can you just hold my hand at the midnight? See, baby, when you start walking with God, it gets beyond just foolish things. You get to want the new thing. I need the new thing. And it don't come in no wrapper. You can't get it from Macy's. It's called a relationship. I don't know about you, but in this season, I need a relationship with thee. I need you to talk to me. And I don't need to just have a Sunday morning experience with you. I need you to talk to me on Monday. I need you to regulate me on Tuesday. I need you to shift and rock with me on Wednesday on Thursday I'm really thirsty for you on Friday I need you to meet me because payday is real short on Saturday I need you to just sup with me and then Sunday we could do it all over again I don't know about you but I don't got time to rock with no Sunday Christians I need some 24 hours seven days a week I need some people who've been tearing up that floor day in and day out and say God I don't see you God I don't feel you oh but God if I could just perceive you just to perceive God oh if I could just give you a metaphor I remember when I was eight years old and this is one of my most profound memories my grandmother she used to make an apple pie apple pie so good I can taste it in my mouth as I speak and the thing about perceiving is that I didn't have to see the apple pie to know it was baking I didn't have to taste the apple pie to know that it was cooking all I needed to do was smell it it's some things God is sending down from the spiritual from his kingdom that you don't need to see it you don't need to feel it you don't even need to help bake that bad boy just smell it just smell it it's an aroma coming right now God is cooking some Something in his kitchen. Do you smell it? Do you smell it? God is cooking opportunity in your life. Oh, God is restoring your dignity. Oh, God is baking back the promises that you lost. Oh, God is about to do a new thing in the kitchen. Have you ever had a new recipe from a baker before? Have you ever had something new from somebody that you knew could throw down? God is about to take his personal recipe in this season and he's going to give it to you just how you like it. Woo! You see, what makes Isaiah so relevant is that he's able to see the reigning sun as he moves to and fro. He's able to see the king of glory. He's able to see, perceive the mighty God. You got to understand what makes Isaiah's prophetic so real is that he's able to touch the great I am. He's able to see the everlasting father. Isaiah has the foresight to see the father dressed up in flesh, walking amongst the people. Uh, You got to understand it was such a provocative message. He tried to put it in words, but he couldn't. He tried to put it in emotions, but he couldn't. But he knew he had to get this message to the people. So he just said, can you perceive it? Hey, have you ever just thought about how great God is? And I'm not talking about how great your church is. St. John is the bomb, right? I'm talking about how great God is. I'm not talking about how great your religion is, how great your denomination is. I'm talking about the God of the denomination. 
that you understand that he's ushering you into a place that is so new that eyes have not seen ears have not heard what is in store for those who love him oh it's some people in here need to hear that because your heart is breaking right now it's some things God has prepared for you and I know your heart is hurting I know you're crying I know you got tissues in one hand and you're wiping off tears on the other hand but I'm here to tell you God's got some promises that he's baking for you on this Thanksgiving can you perceive it you're talking about a glory that is all-encompassing, that no evil can stand in the sight of it. He will share his glory with nobody. He has no rival, no formable opponent. Um, you got to understand when we start talking about God, we're talking about somebody who rules and super rules. And if all the power is in his hands, oh, we see him parting the Red Seas. We see him swallowing up nations in the earth. We see him shaking mountains and setting them on fire. We see him shaking and quaking. Oh, but in verse 10, we see him do something else. We see him making a way in the wilderness, in the rivers and desert. Can I just stop there for a moment? Because this is when it gets a little weird for me. Even little Pentecostal me. It says he's making a way in the wilderness, in the rivers, in the desert. This text is peculiar to me because rivers are impossible to find in deserts. Uh, and this just ain't the preacher man talking to you. This is a man who's taught environmental science before. Well, we spent units talking about the different ecosystems. And, and, and rivers, you can't find them in deserts. Uh, and when I bring my logic, because, you know, me, me and God, we, we cool like that. I talk to God about stuff. So I brought this to God while I was preparing today. I said, God, wouldn't it just make more sense if you just put me in, a, in an environment with rivers where it's just naturally there? Wouldn't, it be, wouldn't that make more sense where you would just take me to maybe a tropical island or something? Or you take me to the woods where rivers naturally flow? But the more I thought about that thing, y'all, uh, my faith started to get ignited. Because you see, in this season, listen to me closely. In this season, God is not just redeeming bodies. He's redeeming environments. Oh, I'm about to say that again because some of y'all missed it. In this season, God is not just redeeming bodies. He's redeeming environments. What does that mean, preacher? I am so glad you asked. What that means is God is about to redeem the spaces that you live, you labeled unlivable, the things you said that were unbearable. God is about to do a new thing. He's about to transition your household. He's about to transition your kids. He's about to transition that marriage. He's about to transition that tough parental relationship. He's about to transition. He's about to transition. He's about to transition. You better catch it. He's about to transition. He's moving. And baby, it's bigger than saving you. It's about saving your block. God is about to to redeem some environments you've been praying talking about I wish I could just be saved without persecution I wish I could be like me in front of my family I'm glad you asked because right now God is about to redeem your environment he said if that's what it takes for you to be saved I'm about to save your auntie I'm about to save your uncle I'm about to save your brother I'm about to save your sister in this moment I'm breaking all bars in your life all excuses that are standing in the way of you serving me so in this season in 2020 my family's being redeemed my job is being redeemed you know where I work at I work at a place with all believers all teachers who pray all the time that ain't nothing I guessed upon that ain't nothing that I made happen that's something that God intentionally put me there because he knew that if his child was going to survive he needed to be in an, in an environment of fellow intercessors you got to understand when God has a purpose for you when God has a purpose for you, he will make things that are unreasonable and rational show up like rivers and deserts. Uh, 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 if I could just slow it down, this is for 30 people who are watching right now. Stop being in such a hurry to move in physical spaces. And I want you to hear me real clearly. It's 30 of you right now who are literally, you're putting applications in to leave the city of Houston. You said, I'm done with it. I don't want to do this no more, God. I can do this somewhere else. And you're putting applications in. 
And the thing about it is you've been moving your whole life. And every time somebody messes with you or every time you get angry, you say, I'm going to move. I'm going to quit the job and I can do it somewhere else. I'm going to quit the relationship and, I, and I'll go with somebody else because I'm bad and I got it and somebody else can appreciate it. And you know what? You're now going on 40 and you've been doing this pattern for over 10 years. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you when God is calling you to move, first is in the spirit. And so many times we think God is telling us to move to a different place, which he is asking us to move to a different place. But oftentimes it's to move to a different place in him. And sometimes we don't need to go across state lines. We just need to go into our prayer closet. Oh, just to be in God's prayer closet, just to be in his presence. Some of us, we have been just moving and shifting and going to this place and that place. And it's really a symptom of something going on on the inside of us. And we need to get that thing in check because it's a new thing happening. Living in transition. It's a place where God's grace and mercy flows like never before. Living in transition while walking in faith is an invitation to flow. It's an invitation to flow into the now, into the spiritual thing. For I'm about to create new heavens, new earths. The former things should not be remembered or come to mind. We are transitioning into a spiritual thing. And you see this spiritual thing, this thing that Isaiah was able to capture. It was a thing that, that, that crystallized. And you see Christ has birthed the church and the church is that thing. It's a new thing. You got to see what Isaiah is seeing. It does not even have a name yet. It's a whatchamacallit. It's a thingamajig. It's a what you call that again? What if I told you? No, what if I proclaim to you the thing that's about to rock your world? The thing that's going to usher you into your next season don't even got a name yet. So you better stop trying to dress like everybody else. Stop trying to talk like everybody else. Stop trying to write your book like everybody else. Stop trying to base your business plans on what everybody else is doing because God is about to do a new thing in you. This new thing that Isaiah sees happening, it happens again in 2 Corinthians with Paul. So if anyone's in Christ, there's a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. But the thing about this new thing, it's a holy thing. See, you think that term holy thing, I didn't create that. That's what they called Jesus when Mary was giving birth to him. They called it a holy thing. Anytime God births something inside you, it's a new thing, but it's a holy thing. Not a thing that will make you famous, a holy thing. Not a thing that's going to give you Instagram followers. A holy thing. Not a thing that's going to drive up your Twitter. A, a holy thing. Not a thing that's going to make you sound intellectual so you can say, er, er, er. A holy thing. Uh, not a thing that's going to make your finances blow up. It's a holy thing. Before we get a name for it, before we infuse it into our vernacular and make it fit into our theology, when God first births it, you don't have a name for it. But all you need to know, it's a holy thing. Much is being said today about the state of the church and who's open and who's staying closed and the new innovations that would have to be adapted to keep up with pace with the current state of affairs. We're going to have to do this and we're going to have to do that. And then the people are going to like this, but the people might like that. We're going to have to do this and we're going to have to do that. But the problem begins when you think the church is just the building. And the problem only becomes more severe when you think the church is just a URL link. Yeah, I said it. And when you think the church is just a URL link that you could just click and wipe the sleep off your eyes and get your Sunday morning fix and roll over in the bed. You got to understand because the kingdom of God is not meat. It's not flesh. It's not buildings. It's not even virtual. If you believe it or not, it's the Holy Ghost. It was never about a building in the first place. When Peter said, on the rock, I will build my church, I'm sorry, he was not talking about a church building. He was not talking about a fundraising committee. He was not talking about the temple of God with your bad self, full gospel ministries. He wasn't talking about that. He wasn't talking about man-made stuff. The church he's talking about is a holy thing, a new thing. 
It has no address. It has no coordinate points. No GPS can track it. The church is a holy thing. It's a holy thing. It'll get in the car with you when you lift up your hands and it's right there. It's a holy thing. When you feel like you're about to lose your temper and you feel like you're so angry and it'll step in and you'll feel like this wave of peace just hit you. That's the church, baby. It's a holy thing. When you feel like you, you can't sustain yourself, when you feel like you don't know how this is going to get paid and you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, it's a holy thing. It's not a club. It's not a stage. It's not a platform. It's a holy thing. God is about to do a new thing in the church. What if I told you, no, what if I proclaimed to you that the key to living in transition while walking in faith is embracing the invisible power of the Holy Spirit. A power that will mature you. A power that will educate you. A power that will sustain you. You see, this new transition in your life is about moving in a new realm, in a new reign. It's about embracing a new mentality, about a new mindset, a new revelation, a new understanding. You got to understand this Thanksgiving, this Christmas, it's about to rock our world, right? Yeah. But I think it's stripping us back to the basics. You got to think about it. Think about it like this. The church started in the house. It literally started in a house. Jesus wasn't doing no tent. He, he didn't start off with this mega ministry. He wasn't going to all these sold out stadiums. No, it just started in the house. And I think it's so apropos that God is bringing us 360 degree, in a 360 degree turnaround. We back in the house where it all started in transition, waiting and praying for the Holy Spirit to come. Because that's what the early Christians were. They were in transition. They were following God in the fog. They didn't know whether they were coming or going. They was just walking on the hills and the valleys, waiting for the Holy Spirit to present themselves. As I live in transition and I walk in faith, I know, I thank God that I'm covered by the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's some people right now. You're searching for God right now. You're asking, God, I, I, I agree with this message. But, 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 Pastor Cheers, I, I, if I'm going to be honest with you, I've been in transition a very, very long time. And, and things ain't just been rocking my way. And, you know, I've tried to do the prayer thing sometimes, but then I get caught up and, and, and I need you to pray for me right now. I, 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 I think I'm ready to make a better decision and a different decision, but we ain't even in church right now. How does thing even work? I'm going to tell you. The thing about God doing a new thing is that he will redeem you right where you are, right in your virtual reality, right in your living room, right in your mess. God is coming right now. If you are a person right now, you say, God, I need you to save me. I need you. I need a relationship with you. I need you to come in my heart. I, I, I need you to transition me from where I was to a new place. Because what I'm doing right now ain't working. I thought the election would change it. I thought if I got a new girl, that would change it. I, I thought if I got a new job, that would really quench my thirst. But I'm seeing that the only transition I need right now is a transition in my mind. Save me, dear Lord. If that's you, I want you to, I want you to, I want you to stay with me. I want you to stay with me because I got a prayer for you. You might be somebody where, where you say, I've been to church. I'm saved. I know how to do that. But I need to renew my relationship. I need to get this thing right because you know what? I ain't been really standing in God like I'm supposed to. But I'm here to tell you, I ain't been standing in God like I'm supposed to either. You in good company. You in good company. Come stand with me. Come stand with me. I got you. Come stand with me. Come rock with me. If you find yourself in either of those two parties, it's okay. Just stay with me. Or you might be a person where you say, I just need prayer, Pastor. Just pray for me. I just don't feel right. Just pray for me. I started it the week before, but I'll call a proverbial altar call right now.
That means wherever you are, just stand up if you need prayer. Wherever you are, if you need God's healing, just stand up. Wherever you are, if you need God to speak to your broken situation, just stand up. And with that being said, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And when you repeat this prayer with me, I want you to know that you are saved and you are covered under the blood of Jesus. That nothing can separate you from the love of God. No mountain, no obstacle, none of that can separate you from the depth and height of the love of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for being the Alpha, Omega, and beginning again. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son down in flesh to die for me. Dear Lord God, thank you because in the same moment you allowed your son to resurrect and conquer the cross just for me and he died for my sins and I thank you dear Lord God right now and this is the part I want you to pay attention to right now right now I accept you I accept you into my broken heart dear Lord I accept you into my affairs dear Lord God I accept you as the Lord over my life God sit on me Sit on my mentality, dear Lord God. Sit on my family, dear Lord God. Sit on my finances, dear Lord God. I can't be the same that I was when I came in there this morning, God. I need you to shift some things. I need you, dear Lord God, to transition me. Oh, God, transition me. Transition me, dear Lord God, from just being an observer to being a child with you, dear Lord God. Transition me, dear Lord God, from being in debt to being free. Oh, transition me, God, into a space of redemption. Redeem me, dear Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer, if you prayed that prayer, you are saved. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen. How about you give God a Holy Ghost clap right now? How about you give God a Holy Ghost clap right now? Amen, amen, amen.